I am Henry Oster. I was born in 1928, was the beginning of Nazis' rise to power. All Jewish people in the country of Germany lost their citizenship. But most important, the privilege of citizenship meant you lost all your civil rights. In 1941, we were forced to leave Germany. On Saturday night, they broke down the small door to our apartment, accompanied by German shepherds, ready to kill. The train that we were put on left with no idea our future, not even our destination. A day and a half later, we were unloaded and greeted by people that looked emaciated. They announced and said, welcome to launch. We had nothing more than one loaf of bread per person per week. My dad had come home one night, claimed to be very tired, sat down and leaned against the wall and simply fell asleep forever. Starvation was the main cause of death and mortality in the ghetto. There was a miracle. The miracle was there were two men. On some Mondays, they would give me a slice of bread. The first time I had to witness the hanging, the execution, Sunday's entertainment, I was prodded with a bayonet to get on my toes. And as I did so, I had the shock of my life because my two benefactors, turned out to be the executioner of the ghetto. They were the hangman. In 1944, we were immediately taken to a train, densely packed with no knowledge where it was heading or what our fate would be. We arrived the next day, the doors were ripped open and the inmates of the wagons were brutally ejected my mom was yanked away if a tornado had simply whooshed her away. And that was the last time I saw or heard from my mother. Small, I was 15, barely, and we were forced to proceed to the end of the platform where a Nazi officer of the SS stood and with a riding whip pointed at you to go right or go left. And this motion of a wrist was a moment of living or dying. These were the gas chambers of Birkenau. And we were given a little bit of information. Whatever you do, do not ever volunteer. Make yourself invisible. I was there for several weeks when one day somebody came in and said, they're looking for juvenile volunteers. I raised my arm and I yelled, I speak German, I speak German. I was selected with 130 boys. We were forced to raise our sleeves and we were given a tattoo. I was given an extra job, take care of the stallion. And the reason that I was given the job, because the horse understood German. It was a dangerous job because the horse tried to bite, tried to hit me, kick me. If we had any kind of sign of illness, we would be candidate for extermination. However, I have my medicine with me all the time that will help the healing, and that is your own urine. Because I used my own urine to treat my wounds, it never did leave any scars or scabs. 1945, in January, who were taken away in what is commonly known as death march. Those who preceded us and could not keep up littered the side of the road in the most grotesque fashion in the snow banks of the bitter, bitter cold in Poland. A few days later, we arrived, welcome to Buchenwald. No food was distributed for the next 10 days. The death rate in the camp was Unbelievable. 
On April 11, at 3.15, we hear a noise that was unfamiliar to us. A friend who was barely able to get to the window said in a broken voice, I think we're being liberated. I finally dragged myself up the window, looked out, and I was convinced of two things. I lost my mind, and I probably only have seconds to live. By looking for the insignia in front of the tank, I do not see a German one, but of all things, a Jewish Star of David in white, painted on. Looking up at the turret, the officer yelling, you are free, you are free, was not in German uniform, but American. That had to be an illusion, the border of insanity. Uh, I'm aware I'm a scarcity of survivors because after the war, fewer than 30 German boys under the age of 18 were located in all of the liberated camps in Europe. That scarcity and rarity made me decide many years ago, more than 50, to be able to speak to groups like yourself, to have you learn about the history that nowadays tends to be forgotten by the current generation. And all that people know these days is Holocaust. And their definition, if you were asked them, it killed six plus million Jews. There were five million additional people the Nazis killed. People they felt were not suitable to survive for various reasons, political, medical, racial, religious. To be able to talk about it is uh, not easy, but I feel it's necessary, especially for current generations who have little connection with something that took place over 70 years ago.